Okay, the next one, we have here the Oncocerca volvolus. So, other name for that one, this is your blinding filarial worms, also called here as your convoluted filarial worms. So, try to cause here your blinding filariasis, also to try to cause here your river erysipelas, and we have also here the coastal erysipelas. Pag sinabing river, coastal, so we have here or stream, for example, mga water, uh, body of water. So basically, uh, it is transmitted here by the black fly belonging to your simolium uh, genus simolium. We have here your simolium danosum. Okay, so it is being called here as the river erysipelas, coastal erysipelas, because again, for the life cycle of your vector, it requires river, it requires stream in order for that then to complete the life cycle. That's why tinawag siyang river erysipelas. And most likely you get infected here by uh, going the river because ando na mga vector natin. Okay, we have here the habitat. So this is your subcutaneous na filarial worms. Again, the microfilaria could not be found here on the, or I mean the adult worm is not inhabiting your peripheral blood or lymphatic vessels. But rather, the adult worm is found here in the subcutaneous tissues, where they try to be present in the tumor-like lesion or nodules. You call that one as your oncosercoma. Oncosercoma. So, nasa loob siya ng nodules or tumor ang ating adult worm. Periodicity, this is your subperiodic periodicity. Okay, then we have here the adult worms. So the adult worms still follow here our usual characteristics of your filarial worms. So again, they are thread-like, they are white and creamy white. And then the lifespan of this adult worm here could go as uh, okay, as um, long as 20 years lifespan. Okay, for adult male, this is 2 to 4 centimeter in long. And we have here the curve was your end tail. Adult female measure 33 to 50 centimeters would have here are rounded po sa your end. So, ganun naman talaga ang characteristics ng ating mga female and your male adult worm. For the microfilaria, we describe this one transparent, opalescent, with a distinct um, transverse striations of the cuticles. Okay, for the, again, for the additional note, for the microfilaria of your Oncocerica volvulus, again, that one is not, again, the tail end of that do not have the sheath. This is unsheathed na species. Okay, plus, again, the microfilaria could not be recovered in your peripheral blood smear. Okay, then we have here the pathology of your, or disease manifestation of your Oncocerica volvulus. The first one, we have here the adult worm could be recovered Okay, the adult worm here could be recovered here on the nodules, subcutaneous tumors or nodules. So, call it one as your onco-sarcoma or your onco-sarcoma. Then, we have here the patient that also shows here rashes, dermatitis. If the patient is an African, so the rashes could be found here on the uh, thigh, in the arm, in the trunk area. For the American, the rashes here could be found in the head and the shoulder. Another head infection here on the pelvic area. Uh, result here to the loosening of the elasticity of the skin. That result here to hanging groin appearance. Lumalaki ang scrotum niya din. That's your genital elephantiasis. Okay, then we have also here, part of the term for that is your hanging groin appearance. Diba, hydrocele is the term for your with syrup and craft, malayi, but your hanging groin Appearance, genital elephant, yes, found here in your Uncocerca volvulus. Okay, if the parasite try to infect the eye, so it cause here blindness. Kaya tinaw siyang uh, river blindness or blinding filarial worms. Another one, in the case of the chronic dermatitis, intense itchiness, which try to last here for a longer duration. As a result here to the lizard skin. The lizard skin characterized here by scaling and drying of the skin. The other one we have here, the leopard skin, characterized here by depigmentation or the blotching of the skin. So, para siyang may mga, so, kung ito one skin, may mga spots, dark spot. So, making that one parang leopard.
Okay, then we have your laboratory tests. So first, we have here your skin biopsy, massa biopsy. Okay, basically because the parasite is present on that and not in your peripheral blood. So ideally, bloods, um, blood collection is not um, diagnostic for the identification of your oncocerca bulbous infection. Then we have also your nodulectomy, removal of the nodules to identify surgical removal of the nodules or the oncosarcoma in order for you to isolate or to recover the adult worm because they are found encapsulated in your nodules. We have also here the Masotti test. This is primarily manifestation of the patients having an infection after the patient's been given by a drug, um, diethyl carbamazine. So after 24 hours, the patient tried to feel extreme exhaustion, pagod na pagod frustration, limp adenopathy, and headache plus skin rashes. And you call this one your masotti test. So pag maganon ka na manifestation, then you are positive for this. Okay, the next, the next one we have here, your Manzonella ozarde. Other name for that is your ozar filarial worm. So Manzoneliasis ozarde. Okay, the vector for that is your blood-sucking insects, culicoides, or your Okay, the habitat, we have the visceral organ, we have also the fats. Okay, it's non-periodic. Okay, lahat na Manzonella species natin are non-periodic. Okay, for the microfilaria, this is non-unsheeted microfilaria. And then we have here, the end part is tapered or pointed. And then the nuclei here is not extending up to the tip. Wala siyang nucleus, nuclei up to the tip. Okay, for the disease manifestation, okay, so before this uh, parasite here do not cause, or try to cause have here asymptomatic infection in a human, recent studies would um, identify here that they try to cause their lymphadenitis. We have also here the skin rashes. Another one, we have the joint pain manifestation in the form of your arthralgia. Again, this parasite is uncommon in a human. Most likely try to infect the monkeys in a pig. Okay, the next one, we have here the your diape. We have here the Manzonella perstans. Other name for that is your dipetalonema perstans. So the same characteristic here with your Manzonella ozarde. This one is also transmitted here by the bite of the culicoides, your vector. This one also non-periodic periodicity. And the habitat is same within uh, visceral organs. <clears throat> so it just differs with the microfilaria. The microfilaria is also sheet, it's also non-sheeted compared with your Manzonella ozarde. Only that the nuclea here is up to the teeth part. Whereas in your Manzanella uh, Ozarde, ang kanyang nuclei is not up to the tip. Ito ay hanggang sa tip part ng kanyang nuclei. But both of them are unsheeted. Here we have your laboratory diagnosis, the specimen for both your Manzanella, you can have your blood smear, thin, thickness smear. Then we have concentration technique, your immunofluorescence for your serological testing. And we have the treatment, we have your diethylcarbamazine, and the histamine for um, allergic reaction, your dermatitis. And for pain, we have here your analgesics. Okay, the last one, we have here your Draconculus medinensis. Other name for that, we have your guinea worm, dragon worm, serpent worm, medina worm, and we have also here the fiery serpent of the Israelites. So, very common in the Israel. Okay, this one, the mode of transmission is by ingestion of the intermediate host. The intermediate host here would be your cyclops or copas, those are your small fish, those are your crustacean, small crustaceans. Okay, then we consider here this one as not a true filarial worms because again, it do not produce microfilaria, but rather try to produce here the rabditiform larva. So the infective stage to your host here will be your rhabditiform larva, not your microfilaria. Okay, so Draconculus medinens is actually, ito yung sa symbol ng medicine, pang worm, that's your Draconculus medinens. It's actually the rod of As Asclepius, which is a symbol of the medicine. Parang snake-like natin, 
Actually, that's your Draconculus medinensis. Okay, for the morphology, we have here the adult worm. So, adult worm, we consider here the Draconculus medinensis, the longest nematode, measuring here 50 to 120 centimeter. It's equivalent to your 500 to 1,200 millimeter in length. Then, for adult male, there's 40 to 45 centimeters. And the adult male will have here rounded anterior and the, pos the posterior and will have here a curve that would allow us here to, to try to anchor here the adult female worm during the copulation. Adult female, this is larviparous or viviparous. This is not laying egg, but rather what it lay here would be your rhabditiform larva. And it measure here 50 to 100 centimeters. Okay, for the life cycle of your Draconculus medinensis, again, okay, we have here the intermediate host, which is your copal, cyclops, or small crustacean fishes, where it contains here the, the infective stage, the rhabditiform larva. So if you try to eat that one, okay, so go to your MES, developing to become adult worm. Adult worm try to inhabit here your subcutaneous tissues. Then you have your adult male, adult female, try to copulate. Then, as the adult female worm here try to migrate, pupunta siya sa skin surface natin, sa cutaneous area in your body or skin that come in contact with the water. So, once your skin come in contact with water, okay, the adult female worm here would try to produce an enzyme that would result here to the blister formation or the ulceration of your skin come in contact with water. So, para siyang, after that one, this blister also here try to erupt. So, magkakaroon ng sugat that would allow here the adult worm, the female adult worm here to be released outside your body. And once it's outside your body that comes in contact with the water, it try to rupture, try to release here the larva. And the larva go to the water, body of water, then it will be taken up by the crustaceans, species in the water. Then it try to mature in the body of your intermediate host. Then if you eat that fish containing the infective stage from the deformed larva, then eventually you got here what you have here going to have this infection. Okay, we have here for the diagnosis of your uh, recovery of the adult worm here. So for the blister formation or those body of, body surface here which has the ulceration or the blister. So for the adult worm, you can pull it off by rolling that one in a string or you could use also the forcep. Uh, four step here, make sure that the entire worm is being pulled out at, out of that blister or the ulcer in your body. So, for those adult worm naman na hindi sila or like the infected patient do not um, not able to go to the water or in the body or the surface of the body here do not come in contact with the water, namamatay lang naman ang worm. They just die. They just being absor absorbed and eventually being calcified. Okay, for diagnosis, you could also have the X-ray for identification of the adult worm. Then for the treatment, we have here your analgesic, we have also your metronidazole, we have also your thiabendazole. Okay, so control and prevention, so water treatment, and then do not go come in contact with the water. Ivermectin also help here to reduce the microfilarial load. Okay, so that's the end of your filarial worms.